I love buttery savouries, but they are a bit indulgent. So today I'm going to be making a pizza pie. It's sort of my version of a lamb mince puff pastry, but this time without lots of oil. So I'm going to get right into it. The first thing we're going to do is pop some flour, 250 grams into a mixing bowl. And water, we need warm water. So I've got some cold water here and I'm just going to top that up with a bit of boiling water just to get the temperature right. Just checking. Two teaspoons of dried yeast. Pour that in and give it a stir. Dissolve the yeast in the warm water. You can use the back of a teaspoon to just mush it about a bit. This dough is made without any oil. That's what I quite like about it. After feasting a bit, I do feel like I've had too much butter and too many treats all in one day. So, this is like the insurance test. Always make sure the yeast starts to bubble before you add it to the dough, so you make sure you get a really good dough. I'm seeing bubbles already, and there we have it. That looks just about ready. The mixture's going into the flour with about a quarter teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of salt. Using a dough hook in my Kenwood, just gonna whiz that for a bit. The longer you process the dough, the smoother and the more elastic it gets, and the more water it absorbs as well. That's what we're looking for. has formed a ball and lifts up quite easily off the bowl. It's really soft, slightly warm still. The longer you process the dough, the better it is to work with. In the old days, you'd have to knead it for quite a while, but luckily, things have moved on and technology's changed, so you can get a fantastic dough in a very short space of time. Now, I'm just gonna spray and cook this bowl. I don't like making lots of dishes dirty, so I'm gonna use the same one. Ladies, just remember, and also gentlemen, if you're doing spray and cook, wear a shower cap. Keeps your hair grease free. Pop that in, cover it up with a dish towel, preferably a moist one, and just let that rest for a while. Normally lamb mince is pre-cooked for pies and fillings, but today I'm going to use raw mince and wrap it in that lovely dough to make sure it's really soft and juicy. The first thing we're going to start with is a marinade paste. So chopped onion goes into a little jug. Ginger and garlic. Lots of ginger and garlic, I would say. Some fresh thyme. Generous sprinkling lemon juice, coriander, two green chilies, two teaspoons of red chili powder. That should do it. I like it quite spicy. And smoked paprika, one of my favorite ingredients. Just adds a lovely earthy, smoky flavor to the mince say about three little teaspoons. Salt. It's always important to season your marinades quite generously so you get lots of flavor. Nothing worse than a pie that's under seasoned. Black pepper. Generous sprinkling again. That should do it. Now, about a teaspoon of cumin seeds. I'm gonna use a fancy hand blender now just to get this paste going. Just keep going and resist the urge to add water. It's going to be smooth in no time. So that paste is looking pretty perfect. for the lamb. The paste goes into the lamb mince. And now 
now just mix it through. Try not to use your fingers for this, you might end up smelling a bit like ginger and garlic. And obviously, lovely spices as well. Use the back of a spoon, break down the lumps and the mince. And just keep going until it resembles a thick paste. I'm gonna have a quick peep at that dough and it looks just about ready. And it's really quite soft. Gonna make some room. Now, knead the dough gently, just to get rid of some of that air. And now, you can guesstimate this, divide it into two balls. That's just about right. Feels about right. Work it into a smooth ball and then around. It's quite, it sounds like a little too much mince. 500 grams of mince for 250 grams of flour, but I promise it does work. It's quite a stretchy dough. Next, flour onto the work surface. I know it is a bit messy but it is worth it. Love to cook. I hate to clean a kitchen though. And roll that. About the size of a dinner plate. If the dough sticks to the work surface, just lift it up and flour again. You can make all the mess you want as long as you don't have to clean. This is ready, and quick wipe. Now, a baking tray, and the second round of dough that was rolled, put that onto a grease baking tray. The second one's always bigger than the first one, the dough does shrink a bit. Next, the mince. Scoop the mince, pop it onto the first round of dough. It does feel like a fair bit of mince, but there's nothing worse than a pie also that doesn't have enough filling. That's the good thing about homemade food is that you can make it exactly the way you want it. Also, you can make this for chicken mince or any vegetarian filling as well. It's quite a versatile recipe to have in your book. Smooth the mixture over. And last, some caramelized or very brown onions just for some added flavor. Love the flavor of brown onions. Now this recipe was traditionally only done with raw onions. I've added the brown onion. Next, pop the first round of dough over the mince and gently pull it almost from the center of the dough over the edges, like so. Now we're going to make a sort of a parcel and just lift up gently and tuck the dough under the first round, like this. Be very, very gentle, we don't want to get holes in this. Sometimes the pastry does break a bit in the oven with the steam, but that's fine. Just gently press down around the edges. Pastry brush and more olive oil. Extra virgin this time. Generous glug. Use a pastry brush to gently dab that over the top. Use good quality extra virgin oil for this. It makes a difference to the flavor. Oh, I need some more. Sesame seeds. Generous sprinkle of that. Pop this into the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. Now 
Pan Katai, my favorite biscuit. And as a kid, I have some really bad memories of my mum giving me a solid hiding for picking the almonds off the biscuits. She'd open the tin and find them all almondless. I think she's gonna be quite embarrassed about that. But now I'm gonna show you how I make my very special Nan Katais. Butter going into the mixing bowl and sugar. Using one of these fancy attachments, it creams and also scrapes the bowl down at the same time. Turn this down onto a low speed. Next, in goes the oil. We don't want this splashing all over. Just gently work it through. Turn up the speed quite gradually. Next, cardamom, half a teaspoon freshly ground cardamom, and then just to bling it up a bit, a half a teaspoon of cardamom essence. Continue creaming the butter, sugar and oil until it's light and fluffy. Next, the dough hook. And flour. About five to 600 mils of flour going in. A teaspoon of bicarb. Level teaspoon, that is. I hardly ever sift these ingredients. I let the mixer do all the work. Turn it up gently again. Otherwise, you'd end up in a cloud of flour. Lastly, semolina going in, or tasty wheat. I'm using my fingers to scrape down the sides. Works so much better. ready and it's really soft just bring it together really gently just using the warmth from the palms of your hands to melt that butter further I don't overwork this dough so messy hands using some butter from that butter dish from earlier. Grease your palms, grab little rounds of dough and work it gently into little balls. Now as you go along, grab an almond, a blanched almond and just press that down as you go along. Don't wait for the end to pop the almonds in because that's when the dough will crack. Now, once you've rolled all the naan katai and put them on the baking sheet with a little almond on top, we're gonna to bake them 190 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes until they're pale golden brown. great when it's tapped nice and hollow which means the bread dough's done. Now use two lifters, I'm using two spatulas and just gently lift that up and pop it onto the board. Serrated knife. And slice through. It's best eaten hot.
Oh, it sounds even amazing. Using a cake lifter, just lift up the first slice. That's what it looks like. Garnish the pie, the bit of fresh coriander sprigs, and lastly, the non katais that I've baked. Now, just for old time's sake, I'm actually gonna pop off an almond. Mmm, just like I remember. Maybe one more. Mmm. That was for my mum. AMC Cookware is giving away this set of pots valued at 4,750 Rand. Entry details on screen. Kenwood is giving away this fabulous K-Mix kitchen machine. Entry details on screen. Coca-Cola is giving away a fantastic hamper, which includes a collection of beautiful Coke-branded items for your kitchen. Entry details on screen.